It's my pleasure to introduce the next editor that we are going to meet in this series of videos uh, for chemical engineering research and design, Professor Juan Gabriel Segovia uh, from Mexico. So Juan Gabriel, please tell us a bit about yourself. Thank you for your kind introduction, Bradley. Okay, um, my name is uh, Juan Gabriel Segovia. I am professor in University of Guanajuato in, in Mexico. I am chemical engineering uh, from University of Guanajuato. Mm -hmm. And then I got my PhD uh, degree in the Tecnologic of Celaya in, in Mexico. My research areas are uh, principally uh, process intensification, optimization, dynamic control, and the application in principally in, in separation processes. Mm -hmm. And today uh, also my interest is in the design of sustainable process, because I believe that this area is very interesting in, in the world today, and mm -hmm. principally in the sustainable process uh, applied to process separation. Sure. Does that have a particular focus there in, in Mexico, for example? So I know that Mexico is a very industrialized uh, country. You have a lot of industry there. Um, yes, uh, is, is it uh, becoming uh, more of a topic for industry, sustainable development? Yes, in the case of Mexico, it's very um, interesting this area because uh, we have we had in the past years, uh, for example, the a very big industry in the uh, petroleum, mm -hmm. and now it's necessary to to do a transition to the new energy and the two the new alternatives, and in the case of sustainable process, is necessary in this challenging. Uh, area in to apply in Mexico and in Latin America. Okay, okay. And I think for a lot of our viewers um, not so familiar with Mexico, they perhaps don't understand how uh, tightly coupled your economy is and your industry is uh, with the USA. Uh, so, you yes. know, there is an enormous um, amount of, um, I guess, coupled industry where you're manufacturing parts or components that go to the USA or just outright manufacturing, you know, making food, chemicals, products, full, uh, the, full, yes. the full life cycle of them, packaging them up and, and exporting them to the USA. Yes, the, the export and the, uh, in the case of Mexico is very linked with the economy with USA and Canada. And, and in this moment is necessary uh, the design of sustainable process, the sustainable supply chains for, do, uh, for this area and to be competitive in the market of uh, USA and Canada and with the Euro Europe uh, also. Yeah, I, I know from, from living and working here in Europe um, that this is becoming a very big topic uh, yes. because just right now we're at a transition, um, but it will be the case um, for, for all imported products um, that you will have to really account for the manufacturing conditions. And really it's obvious why that is, is that we cannot um, outsource our emissions. We cannot outsource pollution. Uh, so it's no good having something manufactured out of Europe and then importing the finished product if that manufacturing wasn't done in a clean way. Um, so, so that's what you're saying is happening there in Mexico, right? So that, that kind of transition is happening where consumers and, and purchasers in, in supply chains really want to know all of the, the full traceability back through the supply chain. Yes, and uh, for example, uh, now we have a, a several protocols with the with the USA government and with the Canada government, and it's necessary that the production of food, um, mechanical industry, automobile industry, is necessary that the process are clean, are yep. sustainable, and reduce uh, the use of water, uh, reduce the greenhouse gas emission, and it's necessary in this. Um, modern protocols uh, in for this reason in, Me in Mexico is necessary to uh, study this specific topic and to apply these new acknowledgements in the industries because uh, the government and the economy in the Canada and in the USA um, in this moment uh, give us several rules mm -hmm. for the export products and the process in the uh, producer in the clean processes. Okay. Well, that, that, that's, that's very interesting to hear. So I'm glad that as a chemical engineer uh, uh, in your research... this is a very um, a big uh, challenge in all Latin America. That's fascinating to hear. I, I have to say you're the first um, editor in this series of videos. I think we are at video number eight now. 
uh, from Latin America. So you're, yes. you're, you're opening up a, a new part of um, our geography, of our spread of editors. Um, so I, uh, it's a pleasure to, to hear from you and to have your contribution. Um, you, you talked a bit at the beginning when you told us about your research that you worked in uh, process intensification and optimization, and, and I think you said control mm -hmm. of dynamic processes as well. So could you tell us in a bit more, exam a, a bit more detail about that research, maybe a, a current project that you're working on? Okay, uh, today the process intensif intensification is a very interesting tool because uh, the big challenge in chemical engineering is the design and the operation of a green, sustainable and clean process. Yeah. And the process intensification is a good tool for to do this or to attack these points. For example, uh, the idea of process intensification is the design of process with reduction in energy consumption, yeah. of the reduction in the um, number of equipments, yes. of the reduction in the, for example, in the generation of um, some toxic or damaged uh, products. And the process intensification is, um, is necessary applied in the industry because the governments, the rules and the needs in the, act, in the modern world requirement require clean industries reduction in the cost mm -hmm. reduction in the greenhouse gas emissions and in, for example in the case of my research uh, we use the process intensification in several applications for example in capture ca in the carbon capture for example okay. that is a problem yeah. a, a actual problem or for example in the design of new solvents in the industry, mm -hmm. all the new equipments uh, in the specifications of separation process, for example, um, the, the process intensification uh, can design a new distillation alternatives, for, for example, thermally coupled distillation sequences or dividing wall columns, or for example, uh, reactive distillations with energy reduction or for example, reactive extraction liquid liquid or reactive absorption. And this uh, kind of equipment presents uh, reductions in the total annual costs, reductions yeah. in energy consumptions, a reduction in the use of toxic solvent or, or another uh, problems associated to the contamination and uh, pollution. For this reason, I believe that process intensification is a good tool Yep. to generate yep. a sustainable and green uh, industry. Super, super. Having, having said that, those are incredibly um, complex systems that, that you just described. So <laughs> yes, um, a lot of people watching these uh, videos will be chemical engineers. Um, so, you know, concepts like reactive distillation and reactive adsorption, you know, the, the, the principle has been known for a long time. Um, there are not a lot of examples because they are just so complex um, <laughs> to even um, model and simulate those systems is, is an enormous challenge. Um, but have you got any um, particular angles that you take? Is there a particular set of tools that you use uh, to, to try and study these very, very complex Processes. Yes, the, 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 the concept of reactive distillation is old. It's too old. Yep. The, the concept of reactive absorption is <laughs> too old also. But uh, the model, the mathematical model is very complex. The yeah. thermodynamic is so, so complex. And the solution of the nonlinear problems <clears throat> is, 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 a very, is very challenging. Yeah. Today, the use of um, simulators, uh, optimization tools, is necessary to the solution for this complex model. It's possible that the model of reactive distillation present, I don't know, 1,000 equations or more. And the solution of this model, the complexity of the thermodynamic models, uh, do the, the solution of these uh, models um, complex, um, high mathematics, uh, applications and the the use of computers uh, and simulators yeah i believe that the this area of reactive distillation reactive absorption is necessary to study in this moment because the the, the application um uh, is very common today in the industry for example the reactive distillation in the production of biodiesel yeah or for example the uh, reactive absorption in the carbon capture for example this uh, uh, some idea 
or for example, a reactive uh, liquid, liquid extraction is very useful in the in the industry of food, for example, or, yeah. or, or in another similar industries. Sure. These apply, uh, applications are very common in the industry, but uh, the modeling and the solution of the modeling and the optimization of this problem is very, very complex and challenging. And you, you mentioned their biodiesel. So is, is that a, um, a substantial uh, industry there in, in Mexico? And if it is, what, what is the typical feedstock that they are using for their biodiesel? In the case of Mexico, for example, in the petrochemical industry, it's very common the, the use of reactive distillation, for example, in the production of ethyl acetate. Okay. Because the ethyl acetate is very common in the, poly, in the polymerization, yep. in the polymer, polymerization industry, mm -hmm. for example. And in the case of Mexico, a reactive distillation is very common. Uh, another application, for example, li uh, reactive liquid, liquid extraction is not common. And the, another apl application in Mexico is the uh, uh, reactive absorption in the case of carbon capture. Ah, in some okay. industries. Yeah, look, carbon capture is, uh, as everyone I'm sure viewing this video would be aware, is, is a huge um, global topic. And it's gone through some phases, you know, maybe yes. in the past it was a little bit a hotter topic. Um, but I, I think the, the capture part of carbon capture and storage um, will remain a very, very critical topic, even if the sequestration or the storage side yes. of it doesn't actually go as far as some people thought it would. But the carbon capture um, will be very important um, because now we're seeing that actually CO2 is a very important product uh, for, for many current industries, um, but for many future applications as well, um, combined, for example, with green hydrogen to, to make synthetic liquid fuels. So that's very exciting stuff. I, I, I love the topics that, that you've explained. Um, yes, so can we, can we move on and talk a little bit about uh, the journal? So we're both working for chemical engineering research and design. And uh, can you tell me about the section that you're working in and the types of manuscripts that you typically receive? Okay, uh, today the, the more common papers uh, in the separation process section is about, for example, a new designs of process separation, in particular uh, 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 distillation applications, for example, mm -hmm. or the design of new solvents for the use of liquid liquid extraction, for example, or for example, carbon capture um, case studies, or, or, or now it's very common um, the application of separation process in bioprocess, in biotechnological uh, process yeah. for the production of bioproducts uh, derivates of uh, biomass, for example, mm -hmm. and this this ap uh, this application are very interesting because today uh, the chemical industry um, is is having a good travel to the biotechnology area. Yeah. In this case, for example, the production of, for example, of furfural to yeah. biomass, mm -hmm. or for example, the production of levulinic acid, for yeah. example, to yeah. from biomass. Yeah or another similar biochemical blocks. And the process separation are necessary in this area because the, the, the production of these uh, biochemical blocks is low. In general, the production is a high amount of water or another uh, subproducts, but the production of the biochemical block is low, low concentration, maybe uh, 5%, uh, 10%, and is necessary uh, several process uh, separation, no? and the problem is the purification of this low amount of uh, chemical bioblocks require high energy consumptions, yeah. require high amount of solvents, and is necessary the design of clean uh, process separation, sustainable process separation, inherent safety process separation, uh, sepa process separation with good uh, dynamic behavior. And these kind of topics now are very common in the uh, separation process uh, section in the in the journal. This is this is fascinating because I, I, I um, have also handled a lot of uh, manuscripts in the separation section before, but yes. I, I, I'm sure that a lot of people are just not aware about how broad our journal is. That we cover all parts of chemical engineering. 
Um, yes. Because even within this section on separation processes, I only ever see um, manuscripts related to membranes. And even within mm, membranes, yes. it's usually membranes for gas separation or sometimes for water. So this whole um, section that, or, or, or classification of manuscripts that you've just described <laughs> is still within the separation section, um, but it's actually a, really a, a completely separate domain. Um, yes, uh, and uh, um, for example, in the case of membrane separation, also is um, applied in the biotechnological process because presents several advantages are clean, are sustainable, no pollution, but the problem is the cost, the economy of the, of the membranes. And this is another interesting problem in the uh, separation process. Maybe the, the process is clean, is green, is sustainable, um, sa inherent safety, but the problem is the, the cost. Exactly. And this is an equilibrium, an equilibrium necessary in this area. Yeah. Yep, and I, I, I know from, from work that we've done in the past as well that in, in any system with biological uh, molecules that um, fouling of the membranes is, yes. is, is um, it's unavoidable, it, it cannot be avoided, um, but, but, but managing it um, and sustaining the life of the membranes with repeated cleaning is, is very, very difficult. Um, so that's another huge topic, but it's, it's great um, because like you said, there are a lot of inherent um, advantages to using uh, membranes for those separations. I think in particular for the bio um, domain where there's regulatory issues as well, because for, for some things you cannot just use an organic solvent um, to extract your product. If that's a carcinogenic um, solvent and the product that you're um, trying to purify is going to be used in a food product or a biological product, obviously um, there, there are you know, much stricter constraints. Yes, on, several on... constraints and the optimization problem is very, very complex with, uh, with, this, uh, with all these constraints. No? The cost, uh, sustainability, uh, the, for example, the reduction of um, contaminants, yeah. the reduction of pollution, uh, minimize the total annual cost, uh, the profit uh, and the benefit, the economic benefits of the process. It's, an, it's a combination of several factors, but there is the, the problem is, the, is so challenging and very interesting, in particular in the case of application of biotechnological uh, process. Yeah, process. super. So um, what, what would you say is one of the, the most enjoyable aspects of, of working as an editor for chemical engineering research and design? What, what do you derive satisfaction from? Okay, well, no, first, uh, this is a, a great opportunity because um, it's a screen to, sh to show new um, developments in the chemical engineering, new applications in, for example, in separation process in the particular, mm -hmm. a new application in these novel areas, for example, the use of machine learning in the control of process separation of, uh, of the novel areas in the, uh, the production of biofuels or yeah. biochemical blocks, a novel equipments, uh, for example, the a novel application in distillation or in, in a liquid liquid extraction. But I believe that the, 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 the most important is a good and excellent screen to show new developments, new applications, and in general, um, uh, to do a, a good contribution in these um, hot topics, sustainability, clean uh, technologies, uh, biofuels, biochemical blocks, carbon capture, and I believe that in the future and the next uh, few years, uh, there are the most important and hot topics in this, in this area. Yeah, yeah. So look, I, I love that you focused on, on, on what's exciting and what's happening in the future. So let's, let's talk about that. Where, where do you see um, chemical engineering as a discipline and maybe what's specifically relevant to chemical engineering there in Mexico. Where do you see it going in the future? What's, what's important? What things will become more important? And, and what parts of our traditional chemical engineering do you think we maybe don't um, focus on so much? I believe that the, the, the next hot topics in, in the case of Mexico and in all world is, for example, the, the use of machine learning yeah. in, the, in several applications. This concept of uh, Industry 4.0, this yeah. uh, automatization, yeah. mm -hmm. 
And for example, the, the, the another interesting topic and challenging is um, the, the design of uh, sustainable, clean, inherent safety, economical, <laughs> and uh, no, no, no pollution process. But in these um, new concepts, artificial intelligence, intelligence uh, machine learning and uh, industry 4.0. I believe that is the, the, the most important points in the future in the chemical engineering. Fascinating. I, 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 I totally agree with those. Um, and uh, finally, just, just to wrap up our interview, um, you've, you've covered an enormous range of stuff and you've covered it with a, a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm. Um, what tips would you give um, for, for authors? So for other people working in, in the field um, and who might be submitting um, manuscripts to our journal, um, what tips or encouragement would you, would you leave them with? Okay, <clears throat> maybe I believe that the present interesting uh, topics in, in the case of separation process, the, the key words for me are sustainability, yeah. uh, circular economy, uh, green process, uh, um, bio process, and maybe machine learning, uh, reduction in energy consumption. Mm -hmm. For example, I believe that this, these are the key words for interesting uh, topics or for interesting research. And I believe that all research um, around the world are um, in, uh, researching about these topics. In, yep. in particular, in process separation. Um, for example, several of my colleagues uh, working in uh, energy reduction or green processes, or now in machine machine uh, learning. Mm -hmm. I believe that this is a key words and, and key hot topics. And I believe that in my opinion, if, if, if you have a research in this area, it's sure that is very successful now. Absolutely. I, I, I totally agree with that. Uh, Juan Gabriel, it was uh, a pleasure to get to meet you. I, I really appreciate you taking the time for, for scheduling this. Obviously, there's a very big time difference uh, between Germany and Mexico. Um, it is uh, really exciting for me to meet all of these different editors um, working uh, for our journal um, because you are all doing um, amazing stuff. Um, in different uh, topics and in different ways um, but I really appreciate your time today and it's been wonderful for me to get to meet you um, but most of all uh, for us to be able to make this video um, so that our readers, our authors and people that want to, to know more about our journal Chemical Engineering Research and Design uh, can get to know you uh, as one of our editors and um, as a contributor from, uh, from your part of the world. Thank you so much for your time today. And uh, I hope, I really hope, that soon we are making these videos in person, uh, that we are meeting each other at conferences and events um, like we did uh, before COVID. And um, I very much hope to catch up with you sometime soon. Thank you very much for this opportunity, Bradley.